<laughs> so what are you doing? <laughs> uh, not much. Watching some show. You? I'm texting. <laughs> I'm texting this really cute girl, but she's been dry <laughs> as hell, and I don't know what to say. <laughs> When in conversation, getting visual is one of the most important things you could do. In this episode of Textual Healing, we have a college student named Adonis who is having problems getting visual in text conversations. I thought it might be a good idea to help him out. And without further ado, let's get into the second episode of Textual Healing. <laughs> How you doing, man? Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, too. <laughs> oh, wow, you really you really set the mood today. This is- I'm doing the, um, I'm doing a YouTube video taking Tinder girls out on Zoom dates, so that's my background. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude, I like it. All right, so tell everybody what your name is, how old you are, where you're from, yada yada, whatever, go for it. Okay, my name's Adonis Sims, I am 18 years old and I'm from Texas, San Antonio, Texas. You ready to get started? You ready to dive into these uh, text messages? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like what our relationship was. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Can you back me up, talk to me about how you guys got to know each other? Okay, so <laughs> um, we went to ninth, well, we went to the same school during ninth grade, then she left that school, but, and then we didn't really talk. And then I think I, I like texted her or I DM'd her on Instagram. I got her number like maybe a couple months ago, like at the beginning of last summer, maybe. And then, and then this is what happened. Kind of fell off. And then before that, she, she sent a number that turned out to be wrong. That's what we were talking about in the first place. The first time <laughs> around, she gave you the wrong number. Yeah. So she probably gave you a fake number and she's like, shit. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? All right, let's get started. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming this is a cute girl from Instagram. Yikes, wrong number. Ah, uh, JK. And I, damn, this is embarrassing. <laughs> and then, did you text the other number? I may or may not have. Oh, LOL. So what amazing, world-changing accomplishments did you achieve today? I survived. Not world changing, but pretty above average. How about you? I went to the gym and I packed a little for college. So I guess you could say it was a pretty eventful day. LOL. Speaking speaking of, when do you when do you leave for college? August 18th. How about you? I said I move in August 14th. I'm really excited. That's exciting. <laughs> So what are you doing? <laughs> uh, not much, watching some show. You? <laughs> I'm texting <laughs> I'm texting this really cute girl, but she's been dry <laughs> as hell, and I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I hadn't read this before. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, damn, she I sounds like it. a drag. <laughs> no, she's not too bad. We should chill though, like before we leave forever. Why? To catch up and stuff. True, I suppose. You suppose? Hee <laughs> hee, he. yes. Damn, you're playing hard to get, lol. Pretending like you aren't dying to see me. Pretending? Dying <laughs> to see you? <laughs> <laughs> lol, yes. I don't know about all that, but it cool. it'd be cool to hang, I guess. And I was like, Okay. Basically, I was like, if she's not, if she's not like gonna be enthusiastic, I was like, there's no point in even trying yeah. at that point. Um, hmm, okay. What are you doing tomorrow? And then going to the gym in the morning, but I'm free after one. What about you? And she's, <laughs> I just said, <laughs> okay. See, I, I, I said okay because I was like, she, if she wants to, she'll, she'll, extend like she'll say what she wants to do and then she never yeah. did yeah and then she goes um i don't know yet 
Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the conversation. Um, honestly, not that bad. Not that bad, dude. Thank you. I, I, I give you props. That's, that's not a bad conversation. Um, but I can see where you went wrong. Now, okay. Let me know. Uh, tell me first off. First off, tell me your thoughts about how it went. I think she just wasn't that interested, and then I kind of just extended the conversation for the sake of it. At, at like the point where I was like, "What are you doing?" Let me go back into it, and I actually think everything you did was fine. You know, at the beginning, I'm assuming this is the cute girl from Instagram. Yikes, wrong number. Uh, Jk, damn, this is embarrassing. You know, it's it's all cute, and I loved the text, so what amazing world-changing accomplishment did you achieve today? You're just getting fun and you're assuming something positive about her. Um, and then you talked about you going to the gym. And then what you started doing, and this is not that bad, but then you started getting into logistics. And so logistics is when do you go to college? What happens there is somebody leaves their emotional state and they go into their like, like yeah. rational like, logistic state of like, okay, now I'm like talking to like a guidance counselor. And so that fun is gonna leave. Now, okay. that's not to say never talk about logistics ever, like this is against the rule. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to get you into the place of where this is going. Um, it's not a bad thing, but then, you say, I move on uh, August 14th, I'm really excited. She says, that's exciting. I'm, ex I'm assuming right there, you're like, all right, come on, dude. Like, say something more than that's exciting. Um, Cause that's what it looks like. She's, she's almost like purposely giving you small responses, even though she's continuing the conversation. Um, so then what, then, then you ask, so what are you doing? And that's not a bad thing to do because you already spoke. Um, and then she says, not much watching some, some show, you. Now your your text is like, I'm texting this really cute girl, but she's being dry as hell and, and I don't know what to say. That's, that's actually an okay text, it's not bad. Um, but when you blame the other person for not being interesting, it doesn't make them want to be more interesting. It just makes yeah. them go, all right, like go to hell. I don't give a shit. Um, the thing that people have to know, and this is for guys and this is for girls. If you are coming up to somebody, whether it's text or whether it's in person, doesn't matter, you got to lead the whole thing. That's it. Just assume that you have to carry everything. That doesn't mean you have to talk the whole time but that means that you have to run the show. Now this is for men and women. Now if women do want to approach men, this is what they gotta do. But most of the time it's men approaching women and this is what you gotta do. So, um, I am always seeing conversation as very simple and I make it simple for myself so I don't have to think much because I don't like planning, I don't like thinking, I just wanna go automatic and have fun. So I realized that conversations, I could only do two things. I could either ask a question and I could either express myself. If I ask a question, I don't really wanna ask an open-ended question because that's too much work if I'm the one running the show. This is against what most mm -hmm. people say. I, I like to ask closed-ended questions, yes or no questions. Basically, these are assumptive questions. When you ask an assumptive question, uh, what happens is you are telling this person what you think of them. Mm -hmm. What tends to happen when you do that is the other person wants to show you who they really are, right? So if I say, I could ask you something like, oh, what are you doing in your room with the candles? And that's an okay question to ask because you could say, oh, well, I'm setting up for my, my whatever, Tinder date, online Tinder date. Yeah. But an, an assumptive question is more fun and it gets you more creative in your head to respond more playfully. So I could say something like, are you about to like, wait a second, are you like an online prostitute and is this your gig and I just jumped into it? 
So I'm asking an, I'm asking an assumptive yes or no question that's fun. It's gonna get your brain moving. Instead of going, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I got this thing, even though it is interesting, what's happening is your brain is now stimulated and you just thought of being an online prostitute. I ask a closed-ended creative question yeah. or I express myself. I don't care about logistics that much. Oh, when am I going to? Now, if I say mm -hmm. I'm excited to go to college, right? That's yeah. expressing myself at a low level. Would you, would you agree? Yeah. Now express yourself right now at a higher level. You're going to college on August 18th. Tell me about it. Um, get visual, it get emotional. I, I'm excited to go to college because I feel like I've been a little bit suffocated by my, by my family and I wanna try a new thing. That's why I'm going to a whole new city. And I'm you know, really gonna <laughs> get some new experiences. Nice, so you're suffocated by your family. Now tell me what you're excited, what new experiences do you want? Give me the wildest dreams of your experiences in college. Uh, I wanna go to college parties and then- And do what? Da and dance. <laughs> and how do you and dance? People. How do you dance? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that, um, I don't know. Uh, like a like a waltz. You would waltz or at a, a college frat party. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yes. No. Different. No. That's good. That's good. <laughs> exactly. But what you're doing is you're getting visual. You're getting playful and fun, right? So instead of saying, oh, I'm going to college on August 18th, I'm excited. You could say, I'm going to college August 18th and I can't wait to go to college frat parties and show them up on the dance floor by doing waltzes while I have a red cup of, red solo cup with beer in my hand and I'm spinning girls around while other guys are like shaking like an idiot. I'm the master of the dance floor, not them. And I'm gonna freaking show them, right? So now I just created this world. I created a visual world. This gets somebody's brain to start visualizing, thinking of fun things. Then I would say, do you dance at frat parties, right? She might not go to frat parties. She might not dance. But that question, that assumptive question, w makes her want to prove herself. So she goes, oh, actually, I like going to the library and reading books. And so it could be something different, but then I could say, oh, what books do you like to read? Do you read romances or um, nonfiction? Fiction or nonfiction? So what's, what's happening is when you get so expressive and then ask, yes or no assumptive questions to the person, that's the only two things you need to do in a conversation. On the phone, it's so much more fun to do because you could laugh, you could, you could get more playful, but on text, you could do the exact same thing. You cannot blame a girl for not having fun if you're not having fun. You are carrying all the weight of a conversation. Make sense? Yeah, you're right. Cool? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So what are you gonna do in the future with your text? I'm gonna be more expressive and like just think about like different ways to say things or how to go more in depth. And then I'm gonna ask like a, like you said, a question that kind of assumes something about them to make them more likely to try to wanna ex explain, you know, yeah. why or why they're not that. Yes, exactly. And be playful, have fun. It's like the number one thing. If you're not playful or having fun and you're expressing yourself in detail, doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, if you want a girl to be fun with you, you gotta bring that fun first. Cool, buddy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You wanna plug your YouTube channel? Um, you want to plug anything? I'd rather plug my, I, I plug my TikTok. <laughs> plug it, dude. It's um, it's Omegle Adonis, like, like the like the Apple Megal, and then my name A D O N I S. Nice, <clears throat> cool. And what could people find on there? Yeah. 
it's mostly just comedy stuff and then um I w- i'm trying to build that right now and then i want to bring the audience to youtube a little bit later down the road once i get a little bit bigger hell yeah I have like 45k right now 45k on tiktok mm-hmm. Woo! that's a big <laughs> number dude yeah, it's been it's been doing pretty well recently hell yeah i've been taking it seriously all right i'm gonna follow you on there um and do you have any questions for me do you have anything you want to tell people that are watching i kind of have a question about like your <clears throat> like your philosophy in some of your videos or basically in, <clears throat> basically in all of your videos that you say that you should kind of be a friend first and then and then try to go into like being in a relationship so how do, how do you like differentiate differentiate yourself from like being in the friend zone to being just a friend to, yeah you know what i mean yeah totally totally so there's only one thing that differentiates you express your attraction that's okay. it friend zone guys that are in the friend zone or girls that are in the friend zone they do not show their interest in the person a tr- like sexual interest in that person it's mm-hmm. the only difference you put yourself in the friend zone so basically from the start show your attraction to women mm-hmm. i'd much rather you do it in person than on text on text for some reason it just does not communicate as well as when you're in person or like having a facetime actually so, what i've been doing is yeah i've been like sending a video that kind of shows my personality as like the first dm yeah and it's been it's been working a lot better than just cool like a regular message cool i never heard of that but that sounds cool man um <laughs> seriously it sounds it's it sounds fun um but when you are talking to the person uh, the two like best ways to actually i think the best way to express your attraction playfully with girls that you meet is double entendres so sexual innuendos um Mm -hmm. you could usually do this by misinterpreting something that they say as a sexual thing um the great thing about sexuality is it builds with tension tension happens with mystery so if you ever step over the line of talking way too sexual about your interest in her kills tension kills mystery that's why mm-hmm. that's why the sexual innuendos are great because they're hints of your attraction for her. Make sense? Yeah. Number 2 is something I call pinging. Ping a ping is is just think of a ping pong ball. You hit it, it comes back to you. It's just a basically testing the waters. So if you're with a girl, you start off with a small ping, maybe Maybe you guys are like sitting down watching a movie or something like that and she's like across the couch. Just be like, come over here, I'm like cold. I need somebody warm to sit next to me. Um, She does that. Well, guess what? That was a positive ping. If she says no, oh no, I'm okay over here. That was a negative ping. That doesn't mean to Mm -hmm. stop and never approach it ever again, but that means back up and then maybe like try again another time. Every successive positive ping, try again, right? You keep pinging until you guys are smooching. There is obviously gonna be a point where you realize, okay, like she's just not into me that way. And then just, you don't have to worry about pursuing it further. There's so many women in the world, but those are the main mm-hmm. two things that you should always be doing when you meet women that you're attracted to. Okay. Cool, buddy? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Adonis, thank you for coming on the show. You're welcome. I mean, it was a, it was a pleasure. I love your channel. I watch I watch every video. You are going to make welcome. you're going to make textual <laughs> healing the biggest thing in the world. I can't wait to see it, honestly. Me too. I have no idea what it's going to look like, but we're going to see. I double text my
Hello, everybody.